Lazima tuangalie mambo ya utawala wetu. Tuhakikishe ya kwamba tuko na utawala ambapo hakuna mkenya atajisikia amewachwa nyumbani. Sisi zote tuko na fikira na tuko na fikira nzuri za kupeleka taifa letu mbele. Haja tu ni turudiane pamoja na tuwe na ile tunaita inclusivity. All right, President Uhuru Kenyatta there delving into that debate about inclusivity. And I want to bring this to you, um, Senator Orengo. What do you make of what the President is talking about there? What does he mean? You know, there I agree with him entirely. First, I wanted to make this point before I come to what you're saying. Mm. I believe that we should have these independent institutions, the judiciary, the office of the uh, director of public prosecutions. Um, all these are very important uh, institutions. But you know, like Nukuruma said, seek ye political freedom first. You know, that political equation until we get it wrong, right, mm. we can never really have a system where inclusivity, inclusivity works effectively. And what I mean by this is that uh, when you have the president in parliament, that he does not control the executive exclusively, his propensity, propensity to control these other institutions. Like now, I mean, it is obvious that because of the power of the presidency, the, executive, the judiciary is sitting very tight. Uh, there was a time when the officer of the auditor general, you know, they, they were being pushed hard by the executive because, you know, the tendency, if you have an executive that has got a free hand, then the tendency for that executive to try to encroach into the powers of the other institutions uh, become very easy. But did the Constitution 2010 give more powers to these independent institutions so as to avoid <laughs> that kind of, you know, bulldozing of other offices? They gave powers, but yeah. who appoints, you know, for example, you know, the, the, the Chief Justice eventually? Um, you know, there was a, um, a year ago, uh, or um, up to about two months ago, where the appointment of judges in the Court of Appeal and, and, and judges even in the High Court became very difficult. You know, the Judicial Service Commission had, uh, you know, gone through the process and the list was taken to the President and he sat on it. Uh, there were appointments like, like now the Inspector General. You know, the President was doing it directly, uh, you know, by passing the procedure. Yeah. So if you have people sitting with them in Cabinet, like, you know, Kenyatta sitting in cabinet with Amasinde Mulero, you know, where he was trying to exercise executive powers that went beyond limits. Then within the executive, he'll, he'll have somebody telling him, no, you cannot go that way. And if <coughs> in a pure presidential <coughs> system like in, in the United States of America, sometimes you have presidents uh, who find it, um, you know, appropriate in order to have inclusivity, to have people from, uh, like Obama had prominent Republicans in his government. But even now, when uh, we and have... then you tend to have yeah. a, a fair balance. <laughs> okay, let, let's yeah. hear from Senator uh, Murkomen. And all, be, I, please begin with what you make of the president talking about inclusivity. Because I, that's important. I think the president uh, appreciates that um, uh, to have to to have a country that is able to go forward, everybody must feel like government is doing is working for them. The complaint that has been there before, especially from our colleagues from the NASA side, was that uh, there are areas, by virtue of Jubilee having its leaders come from certain areas, that the other areas were being excluded in matters of development, you know, roads, uh, infrastructure, you're talking about water, and all that kind of uh, issue. I, I think the president wants, wants that to be addressed. And to either debunk whether there were meets uh, to that argument or now there's a... Because, you know, many people tell us now that because of the handshake now we are good, we are happy, we are in more inclusive, we are okay. But I don't believe so myself. I believe that uh, this is just a lull before, again, the political voltage, uh, you know, goes high. Uh, the, the issues we must address as a country is the issues that either are actual or are perceived to provide this kind of uh, uh, lack of inclusive. For example, the electoral system, the question of how we manage our elections, because that has been the cause of all these chaos for all that period. Which Is was that part of that MOU, the handshake? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. 
Is there, is there a, a, a better way of appointing people to work for IEBC for elections and so forth? Some people believe mm. that if you move the elections of the president, that there will be no election for president, you have a parliamentary system, which means MPs elected the prime minister. It will mean that uh, the IEBC don't have to worry about national elections. But you see, the same thing will go to uh, a debate about how you got a certain number of MPs, yeah. you know, all that kind of conversation. Right. Number two is we must address the election-related issues, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Number two, we must address the question of distribution of development across the country. You can see, the other day it was NASA complaining, or Rengo complaining that Nyanza has been left out. But you saw Moses Kuria the other day complaining that his home, home, home place has been left out. Mm -hmm. We need to address whether those are myths or reality, mm -hmm. and what is the role of parliament when they say they want to do budgeting and so forth. Mm -hmm. We need to discuss also how to ensure accountability in our counties because everybody agrees that as a result of corruption and so forth devolution has not achieved the level of development which was expected so that it can uh, uh, you know the first term of governors many people are saying ah oh, we don't care now what happens in nairobi we have our governor here and then as the reality unfolded uh, some people realize that either the county governments never lived up to the expectation mm -hmm. or that they faced lots of frustrations in terms of uh, workings with national government. I think that most of the things that we call today the things that are dividing us or making us not to become inclusive mm. are not per se constitutional. But I'm not saying we should not amend the constitution for other reasons. Mm -hmm. There are other reasons of amending the constitution to make it even more better, to make it more perfect. But I, I have a problem when there's an argument that is given that that to make the country inclusive, a system of government will do it. Let me tell you, parliament, if, if inclusivity was going to help a country, it should have helped Somalia, <laughs> because now they have a president they elected from their parliament. If what we should be addressing is the key issues, no matter the system of government. Yeah. And if we have corruption... Yeah. The, Somalia is all about it. Yeah. yeah. I have a prime minister. How are we going to procure the Prime Minister? It means that people will sit in a room, you know? But let me put no, this no, to no, you no, on no, that. No, let no, me put this I, to I'm you. All their proposals yeah. before no, no. the 2010 constitution was yeah. voted for in yeah. that... Were all these experts and people sitting to evaluate and in the constitutional making process wrong? They must have been wrong because they must have been wrong. The only way we can in, tell in a, whether they were wrong or right <laughs> is what Kenyans chose. No, look, look when ultimately, no, an opportunity, let me look, just finish no, this. No, when ultimately, the Kenyans were presented with an opportunity with a draft to, to but vote But it was a different for. one. No, let me it just was say, not that. It was a different draft. Yeah. In 2005, let me just say, in 2005, they had a draft they defeated. In 2010, they were presented another draft. Okay. They voted for 67%. Let, so, no, no, we no, no, cannot no, no, pretend no, here no, to no, say let, let there were other right people let, than let me tell you, If inclusivity was all about, you know, getting resources mm -hmm. and getting economic development, yeah. you know, devolution as we understand it now would have addressed that issue. Uh, and in fact, we've been calling for more funds to go to the counties. Whether that will resolve the problem, I, I, I don't think so. I think it will deal with part of the problem, mm. but it will not uh, resolve the, uh, the question of inclusivity. Mm. Even now as we speak, although funds are going to the counties, uh, out of a 1.3 trillion budget, only 300 billion or so, 390 billion uh, shillings are going to the counties. Mm. So the executive is left with nearly a trillion, a trillion shillings, yeah. and that trillion is going to airports, is going to infrastructure. Salaries. Yes, uh, of course, salaries. And debts. But, but and debts. And debts. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, major of the infrastructural development that is taking place in the country, including the dams, you know, mm -hmm. governors are not, are not being accused because of the dams. Mm -hmm. It is a CSS. Mm -hmm. So a lot of funds still remain. The with, national government. With the national so is this government. an indictment so on where, devolution? Where, it, it's not an indictment. In, uh, on it's the devolution. national government. It, it's the national government is sitting over resources. And because uh, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, uh, the person sitting in, in state house will tend to look at areas where they come from. And you uh, are in office Hong for Park. oversight. So what are you doing to we protect are, devolution? We, we, are, we are there for oversight. But uh, Murkoman here will tell you, whenever we try to do a, an over...
What do they do when it comes to the Senate? They kill it. You know, the, the Roraka land, eh, you know, they killed it. There was a very good case, you know, where Senate should have sat and said, you know, this is the way to go. We can't allow, you know, the national government to do these kind of things. So you find again, although theoretically <laughs> we, we say once you have a government in place, uh, we have a parliament in place, mm -hmm. then there's going to be a system of balance. If, if, uh, if, checks if, and balances. There's an accusation that instead yeah. of being, yeah. you know, yeah. bipartisan when yeah. it comes to these critical yeah. Yeah. issues Pre that come precisely. before you, yeah. Yeah. That's, that you play that, pol uh, that, political parties it's not allegiance. Political. It's yeah. not even political Because the executive issue. still controls uh, parliament. parliament. No, 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 even yeah. Trump is very, was very happy until they had the elections. He was controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Right. So let him respond now, to that. Uh, now, we have a situation where the Jubilee government controls the, se the, well, houses, members the, in the Senate and the National Assembly. If they wanted to do good to the country, this was the best time for them. And you're the leader of majority. But now, so what do we hear, like Mudebadi was saying, is scandal after scandal. scandal. Uh, I, I think he's, and is the, is the leader of majority. Yeah. Yes, first, of all, majority. first of all, I'm very happy that Senator Orengo, um, it's for the first time since the handshake, that uh, a NASA person thinks there is anything wrong with the government. Yeah, um, because, no, 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 because, no, no. because, no, wait, because, <laughs> let, let, let as a matter of fact, let me tell you, as a matter of fact, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, you will respond, you will respond to me, he's here to you, make you, his point I mean, about, the let, let him make you, the point, yeah. Yeah, so that you get a proper yeah. response, it's the first time a senior NASA person thinks that there is a problem, and, uh, and let me tell you the truth, we have said as Jubilee, that if we want to do better, we must be oversighted better. It is, it is good to have a working opposition. One of the proposals that uh, uh, Deputy President proposed that I agree with is uh, bringing the leader of opposition to parliament and giving him office. And I can go even further than what he said, that the leader of opposition should rank only third in, 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 um, in protocol after the Deputy President. My argument for that is that uh, the last few months of our practice has shown that uh, when you have, when the, the second largest political coalition or party just agrees with the, with, the, with the party in office, you have a scenario that we have in parliament now, yeah, where you have no critical opposition to raise issues uh, that are related to oversight. I agree with Senator Rengo that there are times where we get mobilized as uh, Jubilee to push a particular agenda. And, and, we have no, and, wait, you, wait, and you forget me, your oversight role. No, yeah. not the oversight. To push a particular agenda because it is part of our manifesto, for example, because we want to achieve a particular manifesto objective. The only time I will realize that there was anything wrong from our manifesto is when we have a critical opposition raising issues. But you know, as we speak at the moment, there's no opposition in the country. So you're absolving no, yourself, no, no, no. So, you're so, absolving yourself from I, any role I am not, of... I am not absolving no, no, myself. No, no. I have told you, uh, uh, to Sophie, yes. but, 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 because I hear Senator you. Rengo, no, no, let me no, complete. You're not going to talk one at a time, give one at a time, no, no, one at a time, no, no, gentlemen. You are leaders in the Senate. No, no, he is not going to talk all the time. I'll respond to him later. Otherwise, you know, I can leave you talk until we go home. Uh, what I'm saying is this, you know, in Parliament, they have the opportunity to direct, you know, the direction this country is going to go to. We as an opposition, every day, and if you check even the answer, even last week, we have wonderful people like Senator uh, Mutola Kilozo raising questions every day. You know, we had a situation where even the judiciary I uh, talked about uh, the role of the National Assembly mm -hmm. together with the Senate in legislation. Now, if we had the support of the Jubilee government in enforcing that uh, judgment by the Supreme Court, you know, a lot of these things about oversight would, would, I agree. would, would have done. I don't have to move to oversight but, as a conversation. Let's but, come back to what but, we are but, focusing but, on but, tonight. But, but, but uh, I wanted to say this about the handshake. Yes. The handshake is because the opposition now brought the executive, I mean the Jubilee government, to the reality that things were not as good as they thought. And if you look at all those nine issues, even the things he's trying to bring in about electoral justice, mm -hmm. it was part of that uh, memorandum uh, in the handshake. Inclusivity, uh, the question of uh, security, 
uh, and probably tied to that is, you know, yes. uh, police and brutality. Right. And the question of devolution, taking more funds. The, the, even the bigger question whether in Kenya we have an ethos, do we have, you know, some kind of wild view okay, so that let, is going to guide uh, us let in, me, in can, making can, cases? Can I come back to my point? Yes, because, and as you make your point... Because Senator Rengo yes. addressed the issue of, for example, Waraka. But let's stay and on the It's important to, to point out Briefly, that issue. Briefly, please. I am not absolving Jubilee of any responsibility yeah, in, terms of, uh, in terms of raising concerns about government and government performance. I am not. We are as guilty as the opposition is. Okay. But the problem is that the reason why an opposition is existing is because it carries, its, it carries around something called an alternative manifesto. Mm. And it has a greater legitimacy to question what we support as a, as a jubilee. And I can tell you without fear of any contradiction, in both houses, they have failed. The opposition the last one year failed. Number two is um, when Senator Rengo raises uh, uh, the spirit of bipartisanship in the Senate, it cuts across. I was among the people who first called to go to court in the last term. Mm -hmm. I chaired uh, many processes that Senator Rengo knows in that house that raised the critical issues about uh, uh, Jubilee administration, yet I am sitting in the Jubilee administration. Even when we sit in the Senate now, we are debating on so many reports, including the May's report, mm -hmm. that raises issues about how we've been managing the country. May I ask you this so the, 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 I, I, I want just to address this thing of, uh, mm -hmm. of Ruaraka land report. Myself, Senator Gideon Moy and Senator uh, Susan Kiga voted against the report and sat there and voted against it. But it's not only us, even the uh, opposition side did the same. But for me, I had the courage to sit in the House and raise issues about how that report was written and the contents of that report. So let me put this question to you. You've talked about the handshake, and there are those who hail it to, to say, and it's to the point of the deputy president on what should happen when a second, the runners up in a presidential election should be official leader of opposition. So in this instance, you see the president, the uh, opposition leader, former prime minister come together. But in bringing people together, as has largely been described, um, it has opened a different battleground. So the question becomes, is this inclusivity in this handshake or is this something else that we are not honestly having that conversation about? In fact, I have... No, no, no. Briefly as you can. No, maybe let, or, let me or, tell you. Um, it was directed at... Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine. yeah. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. this handshake came about because we were being torn apart. And the two principals, uh, I mean, Raila and Uhuru came together. Mm -hmm. But this was not to the exclusion of other players and it has made, been made very clear the role that we're going to play if you look at the uh, uh, building bridges initiative the kind of people who have been brought on board they're not just parliamentarians they are not people just from jubilee or or or, or from from nasa they, they cut across the, the nation but i think the most important thing that we have done as an opposition is to bring jubilee to a reality that things are not right and you were saying as an opposition, if you are ready to talk with us to move the country forward, then we are ready and willing. Mm. And that is why Raila agreed to talk with Uhuru. Now, we have accepted that as a pathway. Uh, but the deputy president was not included. He, he was not included just like I was not included. Uh, I'm a, a very, He's the deputy president. But I'm also a very... He was on a ticket with the president. Yes, but you know, uh, even Raila didn't go with anybody. Uh, he, he, he had a deputy. Uh, but do you then agree Sioka? that it has opened a different battleground? That on one hand we want to hail it as this thing that has brought Kenyans together, but in reality, has it? No, it, it has brought a different battleground and President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga warned us about it. About it. Mm -hmm. If you think about 2022, then it's not going to work out for you. Okay. So, you know, the <laughs> deputy president is going to concentrating on 2022, and Raila Odinga and Uhuru are concentrating on how, on how to bring the country Let, together. I, 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 I think there is, uh, that's a lie. Uh, a lie to the extent that um, I believe the handshake has done a good job, in, and I wish our country was like this all the time that it will remain like this even after next elections and that people will accept the results of elections uh, uh, you know congratulate the person who's sat in the off who is in office and try to work together on issues that are uniting the country i think 
that is really the how I understand that handshake to mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were warned, of course, that the handshake was about two people. And every time we were just emphasized, there was a lot of emphasis that no, it is about two people. We don't want a third person. But uh, from where I sit on the Jubilee side, we felt like the president was fully represented, representative of what we wanted in that handshake process. That's good. And that the, I, I don't see, if it was the deputy president who was among the first people to support it, I have supported it, everybody has supported it. That's good. But there, there's a reality check, though, mm. that even when that handshake was going on, you know in NASA that there's a, the Aisha Jumwa and uh, Honorable Dori are under punishment for being seen to work closely with the deputy president, which raises that controversy, uh, I mean, uh, contradiction that people talk about. We have people from our region, uh, MPs, who have been fighting deputy president from 2013, and they are elected in Jubilee, and they were re-elected in Jubilee. Okay. But you've never seen us do what our friends do, no, no, and yet at the no, same time, no, and at the same time, they no. still tell Let's, let's, let's bring it back to our inclusivity yeah, conversion but, but, because but, I want to talk but, about but, the so gender principle, Tafadali. Did, did, did you hear yes. when they had certain people in committees from Jubilee chairing those committees, like a terror from Nandi, you know? Who the are the whipped? Yeah, who are going out of the committee? They were not de yeah, they were de And they were not disciplined and, by and, the party. And, and, and we shall not lose not track, gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> we shall not lose track. Let's go back to our so conversation. So about Jumwa, you One talk about of the Kitar. issues around inclusivity is gender. Yeah. Okay? The constitution uh, spells out the not more than two-thirds gender rule. Parliament has failed to find a mechanism to implement, uh, operationalize the same. What's, what's the holdup for you? Shouldn't the CJ um, dissolve parliament? There have been numerous... Uh, opportunities given to come up with the law. You know, the CJ can only do that after a process. Somebody needs to go to, to court, uh, file a petition, and once that decision is made, then, you know, Parliament can stand and dissolve. Do you but, think it's but, about time? But on that issue, I think uh, Morkum and Alaya together, I think, you know, our, our, our colleagues in Parliament know the extent to which we have come out to support the opposition, even when they came to the Senate, you know, dressed in a very special way. Mm. We were one of the few, you know, wore the, the um, you know, turban. No, that turban. <laughs> yeah, we wear turbans, yeah, but here we yeah, are without yeah, that but, but, law in place. But, but uh, uh, what I'm saying is that we need together, you know, it's not something that we are, we are going to do just as parliamentarians uh, who believe that it's about time that we did it. I think we must carry everybody. Uh, on board, and you know, there, there's a very conservative and reactionary element within, within Parliament, and, uh, and and I think sometimes also patriarchy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, let's not call them conservatives. Yeah, no, no, no. I think I think in in relation to this new dispensation. I mean, even in in the United States <laughs> of America, the in, in the United States of America, you know, there were people out there who had a problem with Clinton becoming. President, president because of our gender. There was uh, Dukakis, who was a very popular American Greek, uh, Greek American. And because he had a, a, a lady, um, I forget her name, uh, an American Italian. Okay. Yeah. That, but here, that, we, <laughs> more comment, Senator, here we are with the law. Yeah. The president, who's in the party to which you belong, the leader of majority, in his own cabinet, does not meet that rule and those are appointed positions he has it in his power to do so that the political will the lack of it is evident so that when the rhetoric about we're going to do we're going to do is is all taking kenyans around in circles first of all i think in the inclusivity subject um, there's something senator rengo talked about earlier about uh, deputy president talk about 2022 and so forth we cannot we cannot talk about inclusivity and be oblivious of the next elections. And that's why you're raising the issue of gender. That when are we going to achieve you know, a, a, a situation where by next elections, latest, we will have uh, put in place the law that will ensure that those women put in, are, are coming to the house. I mean to the house. National Assembly delayed their vote. We hope they will vote anytime soon. 
Uh, if it fails, we in the Senate mm. are ready to take uh, if, uh, take up the fight. I agree with you. Uh, yeah. If the bill had come to the Senate first, yeah, it would have passed. It would have passed. I think so. I, I think that I think uh, even though we have use. what Senator Renga calls uh, conserv conservative people in the Senate, I think Senate uh, stands a greater chance. Uh, there are greater number. There are higher number of people who are, who are supporting uh, this gender inclusivity issue. But what I found, and this is very interesting, mm. even in the National Assembly and even in the Senate. I found that uh, it's not just men who are opposed to the law. They are women. Women also are part and parcel of that opposition. Yes. So that when you talk about patriarchy, it is a mindset. It's not just the gender of the person. It is just the mindset of the people who are dealing with. We and, have... and, and we can't just talk about gender alone. Yeah. When you talk about inclusivity in this country, we should also talk about the place of minorities across the country. The Rendiles, uh, the Dorobos, uh, the Oromos. Mm -hmm. they, all these smaller communities that have no opportunity to participate in national conversation in appointments when you talk about cabinet not having a, a third of gender there's also a question of why is cabinet only going to be picked from people who come from big communities it's because we want to serve certain political interests that includes votes every time somebody is being appointed say, ah, no, that one, we say ah, that one will not be appointed he has no people because people, you must have a following. So you're to look agreeing like. that there you have failed. Uh, of as course, as, as agreed. I mean, uh, and I hope that uh, going forward, yeah. uh, any time the president gets an opportunity to correct that, uh, we can. will have more women uh, to serve in the cabinet. Let's let's talk. I we think have it's two not minutes right to, to defend what is not defensible. Thank you. <laughs> we have two minutes to go on this. Wundani constituency has 25,000 people. Sika has 125,000. Talk to me about inclusivity in as far as representation that there lacks parity that one constituency has 25,000 one has 125,000 you have in Migori about 30,000 to 33 Kiambu 100,000 Wajir has the same kind of situation is there an inclusivity concern there for yes. you there is an inclusivity uh, inclusivity concern uh, first of all our constitution is based on in uh, the primary principle you know, there are a lot of principles, but the primary pr principle is one person, one vote. Mm. That, that, that is what we, we try to achieve. But when it comes to constituencies, you know, there are parameters uh, that are spelled out, which has got to do with uh, area and so on. Yes. And, uh, and minorities, you know, and so on and so forth. Mm. Because if you go to use one person, one vote, then obviously there are areas which are going to be left totally out mm -hmm. and they're going to have my minorities within minorities when it comes to the presidential elections it is is it is to some extent uh, largely a one person one uh, one vote except uh, when we are talking about you know 50 uh, plus one and and also having uh, you know more than 25 percent right yeah you know from from uh, you know uh, the counties. Uh, so to that extent, I, um, I I agree with you. Yeah. It, it's something that we got and to... And the census is coming. So yeah, what, the census, how do we solve that? The census is going to come. And I hope in this census, it, it, it must be accurate. I, I hope uh, and I wish we could use, you know, biometric, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, technology and so to on. To be able to conduct it. To be it. able to conduct it fairly. Because, uh, you know, sometimes numbers are created when it is so done. more counties yeah. for these who are yeah. quote-unquote see themselves as dis disenfranchised and as far as representation yeah. in 10 seconds more i mean constituencies i beg your pardon yeah i think the uh, the area can be used to, to, to try and give them Show up. Uh, some representation okay but if it is over in, you know emphasize then there are going to be areas you know like kakamega kiambu yeah. Uh, and some areas like, um, you know, even Siaya, All you right. find that there's some kind of uh, majority also, you know, um, uh, uh, um, liability in, in, right. in terms of the fact that, yeah. uh, you know, they, when the issue of area is given more premium, then the, the areas which have got a lot of people also suffer some disability. Murkom, in your final I, word, as you also like comment yeah, yeah, on yeah. the only inclusivity that Kenyans need is that which shall adopt the word as the primary unit of accelerated development. This is a proposal by the Third Way Alliance. Your thoughts well, on that? Briefly, well, please. Uh, first of all, let me go back to the constituency issue. The, if there is something that will divide us more than elections, will be the, this year's census and the, the review of constituencies that will follow and the words. 
the reason being that there are people like Senator Orengo is talking, and I can see he's leaning to that side, where they talk about equality. But there are people who talk about equity. So we must balance between equality in terms of numbers and equity in terms of uh, uh, representation of minority groups. So that we don't want to go to a certain area and suffocate, say, you know, Somalis are few. I'm using as an example, and they are not few. Uh, and we go and suffocate them in a particular area by making sure that their constituency is merged with a larger, larger ethnic community so that they don't have a place uh, of conversation in the country. Right. That's the same to you know, many other minority groups. Okay. So in this conversation that is coming, we must be very careful. And in the Senate, we're already discussing that we want to have a bipartisan committee in the Senate that will oversee these processes of census mm -hmm. and uh, ultimately the question of constituency uh, demarcations mm -hmm. because this will be the most, in fact, more contentious. Because, you know why? Mm. Because if you talk about that Undanyu 25, yeah. there is someone now who's going to say that Undanyu to be wound up yeah, and taken to add thicker, right. an extra constituency. And you can see what that means when it comes to inclusivity in this country. In this country. So in, 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 uh, the, the word issue is neither here nor there for me at the moment. But right. I want us to talk about uh, that demarcation of constituencies and also the words if need be, because words are more flexible, okay. can be changed in parliament, right. but for the constituencies which are fixed in 290, we must be very careful. We are being ushered out. Gentlemen, thank you so much for making time for us. The leader of majority in the Senate, and Nguyen Marako, Senator Kipchumba Murkomen, CIA Senator, and the leader of minority in the Senate, uh, Senior Counsel Jim Sorengo. Thank, thank you. you both uh, for making time for Checkpoint, and thank you for watching the show. Much appreciated on behalf of everyone that made it possible. We wish you a lovely week ahead. Have a good night. Asandisana. Thank you. <laughs>